In this second video about the passive voice, we look more specifically at how it functions in the context of scientific writing. First though, let's acknowledge that the active voice is more direct, concise, and clear than the passive voice. For example, here's a sentence in the passive voice. For the present analyses, data on children and adolescents was used. Notice the passive construction underlined. Now, here are two different versions of this sentence in the active voice, with the active construction in bold. We used and the present analyses used are both more direct and clear. However, depending on context, they're not necessarily better. The use of the first person we in the first example of active voice may be inappropriate. Similarly, the second example personifies analyses in that an inanimate object is using something. This too may not be appropriate depending on context. Here's another example of a sentence in the passive voice. The underlined may not be improved by being made active with the bolded construction may not improve. It's more direct, concise, and clear. However, in order to get this active construction, we've had to change the subject of the sentence from renal outcomes to early surgical intervention. This change may not be in the best interest of clarity or sentence cohesion. All of which is to say, the passive voice can be useful and strategic. In scientific writing, it's also a bit of standard practice. For example, in methodology sections, when the scientific or experimental action is more important than who completed that action, or when discussing relationships, associations, and correlations, when those are widely accepted as true, or the relationships are more important than who established them. And again, to maintain sentence cohesion. Here are some methodological examples of the passive voice. Variables were log transformed, circumference was measured, agreements were established, and children were categorized. If we assume that in each of these contexts, the actor was one of the authors or a related researcher, we probably don't need that highlighted in every sentence. Similar for these relationships and commonly accepted ideas. In this example from the first two pages of an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association, the associations and correlations are highlighted in orange. The methodological passive voice is highlighted in yellow, and the use of the first person we to form the active voice is highlighted in green. While every verb in this methods and results section is clearly not highlighted, the color demonstrates the role that the passive voice sometimes necessarily plays in scientific writing. Finally, there's the known new contract and sentence emphasis which often collude to make the passive voice ideal. As in this example, because one of the emphasized ideas at the end of the first sentence is sex and age group, sentence cohesion is maintained by beginning the next sentence with the subject, these groups, followed by the verb, were then recombined. To insert an actor into this sentence, for example, researchers or we, would just interfere with reader understanding. Here's another example. After establishing the idea of capsid flexibility in the first sentence, if the writer wants to maintain this focus, he or she begins the following sentence with, flexibility in the capsid is controlled by. Yes, we could easily make this second sentence active by switching the subject to variation in hydrogen bonds and the verb to controls, but that changes the focus of the sentence and interrupts cohesion between sentences. So what's it all mean? Remember that the active voice is direct, concise, and clear. Whenever possible and appropriate, have subjects doing actions in your sentences. Readers crave that, it helps them. That said, the passive voice has its place in explanations of methodology that don't need to include the doer, when mentioning relationships or associations, when discussing accepted truths or widely accepted fact, and when maintaining sentence cohesion. When you're writing, make a conscious decision with each sentence about whether it should be in the active or passive voice. 
Then, when reviewing a draft of something you've written, find a balance. If you've got too much passive voice, find ways to make some of it more active.